Draw me close to you Never let me go I lay it all down again To hear you say I thank God for the first revelation There's nothing God can do unless we pray And this is unity We cannot pray from our different places We cannot pray from our different churches But this is unity When we come as Ugandan ministers in UK And we, we, we join in hands to pray It's an important most of our flow they haven't called the vision because they will be here tonight. We gave them a difference, we have announced, but thank God the leaders are here. Amen. Everywhere we look, God's love is surrounding us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.
everyone for this good blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. I know the term our God is more than good. Hallelujah. We are getting there. I uh, would just want to acknowledge the presence of uh, uh, Pastor Musoke is in the house. Let's appreciate him for coming up tonight. Amen. Uh, and Pastor Sunga is in the house also. Praise the living God. And the minister of God also he came with. All right, we just want to continue. Tonight, when Jeremiah heard, he asked about the people who are coming from uh, the land where he was born and say, how is it going on in that land? And they say, even the walls are broken, things are no longer at ease. Sometimes when we hear about the news of our country, we feel concerned and the only way we can respond is by prayer. And that's the main reason why we are here tonight. So, Mrs. Kauma, thank you very much for that vision. God bless you. And um, I believe that we're going to be praying for various issues for our nation. And our nation will rise and shine again. Amen. Now, is Brother Godfrey ready with the trumpet? Okay, come, Brother Godfrey. Let's welcome him. Amen. Praise God. So, we are celebrating uh, Uganda. It's now 51 years old. Amen. 51 years. If that is your son, then you know.
good place. Can you appreciate him once again? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Uh, we have uh, Living Praise Choir. Living Praise Choir. Can you welcome them to come and minister? <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. The song says, I'm chasing after Jesus. Then we got a smile from the Living Praise.
very much for our minister and the presence of God. Hallelujah. I just want to let you know that uh, things are getting better. And uh, we've got a person who has come in the house. Amen. I want to talk to Bishop Chiganda. He's in the house. I want to talk to Bishop Chiganda. He's in the house. He's in the house. He's also in the house. But God is good. Thank you for coming tonight. We
name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Loving Father, I want to thank you for this moment. We thank you as a nation of Uganda. We thank you because you have brought us once again in this place. Father, we worship you and honor you and glorify thy holy name. We thank you for such a time you have given us to be in your presence. Thank you, loving Father, for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Lord, as we come, my God Almighty Father, in this place, Lord, we are raising up our voices before you. Father, we are looking, my God Almighty Father, for unity. Unity for the God of Christ, Lord. Father, we come before you and we cry to you, King of Glory. We haven't been united, Lord. We have King of Glory been separated. Father, we are raising up our voices. We are crying and confessing our sins, Lord. My God Almighty Father, we have sinned against you because we have been, my Father, putting barriers. We have been hurting one another. Even as we are here, my God Almighty Father, there are some who are not working together, who are not moving together in the Spirit. But the Spirit of the living God will invite you today. May you come in our midst. May you come and touch us. May you come and move. May you come and remove barriers that we may walk together in unity as you said in Psalms 133 that when we are united together, the anointing will flow from the head to down to the to elements beard, my God of the Father. It is good, my Father, to be united together. That's why, my Father, you have brought us together. As a nation of Uganda, we cannot move. We cannot go on. We can do nothing without to be united. We can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. We can do nothing. Holy Spirit of the living God, we invite you to our ministry. We confess our sins. We 
but in that community here that the Lord will keep us intact and safe from their foreigners, but also back home that the family values are kept as the word of God sees. Because there are, uh, there are laws that are being passed in the parliament which says that even people who have been living together, they can be regarded as uh, a husband and wife and all this kind of thing. We copy everything from the Western world, but we need to put our nation as the, the more foundation says for God and my country that nothing, the true foundations will not be moved. I will request uh, uh, a pastor who should come and lead us into that area. Briefly, the, the ten years will be done. God is good. Hallelujah. Continue to pray, continue to pray. Hallelujah. Just let's pray to God for the families in the name of Jesus. The first institution that God created or made was marriage. I want us to lift people that are married in the name of Jesus in the hands of God. Let God reign, let God move, let God work, let God restore in the name of Jesus. Let God restore marriages that are broken by the way of the anointing. I want to lift up your voices to God and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Declare by the way of the anointing, let God reign in the name of Jesus. That God will restore marriages by the way of the anointing. Let God restore family in marriage in the name of Jesus. Let God arise in every marriage in Jesus' mighty name. Let God arise and every enemy scatter. Lift up every marriage in the name of Jesus. God will prepare to marry in the name of Jesus. Lift up kings or children in the hands of the Lord. God may wait, God may have his way in the mighty name of Jesus. Just lift them up in prayer. Let's talk to God in the name of the Lord. Every attack of the devil be broken. Every powers of sin be annihilated in the name of Jesus. Let there be peace. Let there be restoration. Let there be values in families, in marriages, in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing in broken marriages right now by the way of the anointing. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let God arise. Let God arise in families. Let God arise in marriages. Let God come home in the name of Jesus. Father in heaven, we commit marriages in your hand. In the first institution of God that you made or created in the beginning, the Bible said that you saw that it wasn't good for a man to live together and you made a woman to be his companion. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, that every plan of the devil that has attacked to marriage is wrong, be broken, be destroyed, be broken by the Lord. Every plan of the devil, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of evil, the spirit of divorce, the spirit of separation, in the mighty name of Jesus, the spirit of this body in marriage has been broken by the will of the anointing in Jesus' mighty name. God we us to come home. We call upon you in the name of Jesus on the behalf of every marriage of God that is here in the soul here with us. In the mighty name of the Lord, the scripture declares that when John the Baptist came, he said in your word that he was to turn the hands of men and children and to their fathers. And the heart of children and to their fathers. And the heart of fathers to their children. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. May you turn the hearts of the married people of God that are divorcing, that are on the path of God, of separation, of divorce, in Jesus' mighty name. Turn the hearts of God. The Bible says that every heart is in the hands of God. Every heart of the King of God is in the heart, in the hands of the King. That the river of God will pray for you, pray for you, wish. I ask you in the name of Jesus that in every time there are some men and women that are in marriage of God, that they see their body in the name of Jesus. And God will come back for our children back to the house, back to the house of their father and mother, back of God, back to the body in the name of Jesus. We give our children of God from drug addiction, from the spirit of weakness of God. We need the blood, we need the fire of God. The Bible says in the book of Chronicles that the blood is spirit. God, may the blood speak in the name of Jesus. God speak, may the blood speak restoration in our marriages, in our families, in our children of God. Restore all family, families that are broken and separated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you, we lift up of God, the church of Jesus Christ. We lift up the 
the church of Jesus so far, not only the community of Uganda, but in the church of Jesus. No, no more divorce, no more separation of God. We will strong and devil in the name of Jesus. But it is love, I pray. It is the power of God in the name of Jesus. It is love of God Almighty in the mighty name of Jesus. When you soften the hearts of many people, the men and women in families of God, strengthen their hearts right now under the anointing. I pray and I ask you in the mighty name of the Lord that you are beyond us, what beyond our pity, what beyond our prayer, what beyond our knowledge, what beyond us we pray. We ask you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. We give you praise. Hallelujah, we give you praise, we give you glory. Don't just pray, hallelujah. Don't break the chain, don't break the chain. In our nation, Uganda, there is no sacrificing children. People who are building buildings, they sacrifice children. People are doing a lot of havoc in our nation. Uganda must, must build five them. A lot of things they have introduced in our country, like home, homosexuals, lesbians, and everything that we imported into our country. Putting them in our schools. We are saying enough of that. We are building a plan to the sky. Let me call Pastor Nancy to come and lead us in prayer for repentance. The Bible says, when well, people who are called by my name shall harbor themselves. And pray and see and repent and tell them from their wicked ways. I will heal their nation. Our land must be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We give you the glory and honor, Heavenly Father. We stand in adoration of your word and in your name, in Jesus. Father, we know that we have sinned against you. For you declare that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And Lord, we know deep in our hearts, we know the truth. That sin is a reproach. Lord, sin is a reproach to the nation. In the name of Jesus and the people over the nation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, as the Bible says that it is the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. Holy Spirit, the true intercessor, we lean on you even right now in the name of Jesus. Come and lead us in true intercession over the nation of Uganda. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the Son of God. Father, we repent before you. We repent on the behalf of the nation. Lord, we have done against you. We have stood against you. We have done, oh God, we can against you. In the name of Jesus, we come to plead for mercy. As we come boldly before the throne of grace to partake of your grace and mercy at such a time of need of the nation of Uganda. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the Son of God, Lord, we bow us before your throne, knowing that you are just and faithful, that if we repent, you are just and faithful to forgive us, O oh Lord. Lord, we plead for mercy. We plead for mercy over the nation of Uganda. We plead for mercy, Heavenly Father. Lord, we repent of human sacrifice. We repent in the name of Jesus. The innocent brothers have been shamed over the nation of Uganda. Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon the leaders. Have mercy upon the priests over the nation of Uganda. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we repent of corruption. Lord, live in the government, even in the church of God. Lord God Almighty, have mercy in the name of Jesus. Have mercy, King of glory. For we know that your mercy is and you rest forever. We come to seek for mercy. We come to seek for mercy over the land of Uganda, over our motherland, Lord. Hear the cries of your people. Hear the cries of your people. Say for Lord in the name of Jesus. Say for God of mercy. Say for Lord. Have mercy in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood that washes in the name of Jesus. Wash us of God. Wash our motherland through the blood.
For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our Lord. The Lord is our King. He will save us. In such a time as this, uh, as we gather together to pray for Uganda, we know of many challenges that we are facing as a nation. With the laws trying to change the opposite way, uh, we don't want to believe the way they believe. The parliament sitting together to decide laws to allow things that we don't agree and the Bible does not agree with. Amen? And right now, we need to teach our children, teach ourselves, walk according to the word of God, and we need to declare this statement. For the Bible says that when two or three people gather together and they agree upon a thing, it shall be established. Tell your neighbor, we, shall, we are going to agree. Now, our agreement is going to be in the scripture and we shall pray. However short the prayer might be, it shall be an agreement. The Bible says, repeat after me, for the Lord is our judge. Say it as you mean it and say it with authority because you are the one. Listen, for the Bible says in uh, Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30, God looked for a man to stand in the gap and he would not destroy and he would not find anyone. For the Bible says whatever we decree on earth, it shall be established. Tell your neighbor you are now standing in the place of authority. And whatever you say now means a lot. And it can change the whole nation of Uganda. Now let us say it with authority. For the Lord is our judge. Yes. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. We don't have, we don't need any way to help us in finances. If the Lord is our lawgiver, we shall be established in the name of Jesus. Now we're going to pray a prayer and we're going to pray for two things. Uh, as far as I feel uh, led by the Holy Spirit, the first one is we're going to pray that God will raise up an army of intercessors. There is a difference between praying and interceding. When we pray today, we just pray for a few minutes. Pastor Kawe is about to come and take me out of the platform. But an intercessor cannot be taken away. The whole night last night I spent time interceding, praying for this meeting. I walked from my house in Barking uh, back, back Road, went to Central London, came back to our church via uh, White Chapel. I walked many miles praying for this. And why? Because when I'm interceding, you can't stop me. You can't, you can't stop me now, but you can't stop me anywhere. So we want to pray that God will raise up an army of intercessors. And the second one, we have people like Bishop Tiganda and other people. We have Pastor Lincoln, we have teachers in the Ugandan community. We have many pastors, but I believe and I feel in my spirit that we need more teachers. When you hear of ordinations, you hear of the daily teachers, bishops, apostles, prophets, evangelists, but you rarely hear an ordination of teachers or preparing teachers to teach the word of Christ. Those are the two prayer points. Lift up your hands and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this evening, Lord, and we believe that you have gathered us here for a reason. Father, we come to you and we bring two prayer points tonight. We pray that you raise up intercessors. For the Bible says in Isaiah 43, Father, that you have your saving in chapter 22 that you are our Lord giver. But right now, as we speak, Uganda is not walking according to what we believe the Bible says. Many preachers are in there doing the will of God, but we still see a lot of compromise in the parliament. Father, we declare that you raise up an arm of intercessors, that you be the watchman over our city. For the Bible says, oh my God, in Ezekiel chapter 33, that if a man is said to be a watchman over a place, over people, and if they do not warn them about the problem coming, if they die, their blood will be upon their lives. Right now, Lord, we declare that the intercessors, the watchmen of the city of Uganda, of the city of Kampala, of the country of Uganda, will now be reawakened. We pray for revival in the lives of those people that have been called to pray and intercede for Uganda. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that the pastors themselves will be filled with the anointing of intercession. We pray that in every church there will be a watchman, watch over the city. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray that you will lift up teachers of the world, that will teach the world without compromising. We know of a few in the country, but we know of a lot of compromise in the country, Lord. Father, we pray that you will touch your ministers, touch men and women of God to continue flowing with the anointing of teaching. Because the Bible says in John 8, and it started the one that it took, that all the people perish because of lack of knowledge. But Lord, we pray that you raise up teachers. Father, we declare it done. We now declare according to Psalms 85 verse 6. For the Bible says, will you not revive us again? 
we exalt your holy name, Jesus. We call the big mother thousands. We call those that are on drugs right now. We call those that don't even know you, oh God. Those that have never even heard your name mentioned, Lord. We cry out for them, Lord, that you may drag them in. Bring them in by your mercy. The Bible says, my name be lifted up. I shall draw men to my side.
salvation comes to our lives, this salvation goes deep even into our pockets. God saves our poverty. God saves our souls. God saves our marriages. God saves our kids. God saves our churches. God saves our nations. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And don't forget the last will of Christ was in Matthew chapter 28. To go all nations, turn them into discipleship. To be his disciples. Glory be to God. So today we want to release the power of God to our nation for salvation. Glory be to God. Can you speak in tongues anyway? Amen. 
The word of Nehemiah, are you there already? Nehemiah chapter 1 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hechaliah. Now, it's uh, sometimes feel like you're wanting you to know what is happening to home, what's happening back home, what is happening there. You know, you could not rest all the time. You wanted to hear that. What's going on? How is so and so? How are these things? How about the economy? How about the education? How about the rates of HIV? How about homosexuality issues? How about this and the other? That was me, my. He was living a good life. Everything was fine. Getting a good salary. But his nation was always on his heart. That's what I'm seeing here. And uh, the Bible said, he asked them, I, and I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived in the exile, and concerning the Jerusalem, and they sent it to me, the remnants there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and share. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard this, these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I continued to fast and pray before God of heaven. And I say, O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and the awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let you are here. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel. Where there is Israel, you can as well put there in Uganda. For the people of Uganda, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. We have, asked, we have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the strategies, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are faithful, and if you are very faithful, I will scatter you among the people. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do they, through your outcasts are in the outermost parts of the heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them to the place that I have chosen to make my name dwell there. Praise the name of the Lord. For sure, Nehemiah was one of those people who cared about his nation. So what we're doing here, which is organized by Assistant Mrs. Alman, the team, and uh, the rest of other men of God who worked with them is actually recorded. This is what God expect of us to do, to spare such a time and to be concerned. And be concerned. We have to show that we are concerned. And uh, it is us whom God expect to do such a thing. So as we are here, let it just come out of your heart. Okay? We are not just here because uh, uh, we didn't uh, have things to do. We are here to make it. And God is watching. Because God has been asking, like he says uh, in, uh, in, in a scripture here, that and I looked and I searched for a man who can stand against a God. Let that man be you. Let that man be me. God is going to honor this. Praise the name of the Lord. God is going to honor this prayer. So as we are praying, power out your heart. Power out your heart. Power out your heart. Where you feel that you need to repent on behalf of us, on behalf of your guidance, please go ahead and repent on behalf of your guidance. I think God, God will honor prayers that more compliments that we bring forth from time to time. Praise the name of the Lord. Because sometimes all the complaining alone cannot solve the problem. Because God is looking for somebody who can stand in the gap. Thank God we are here. And let me tell you, it's not because you don't have your only 
uh, issues that may need to spread attention. But you know, sometimes you can pray for your soul family over, over praying. You can pray for your soul. John came to a point when he realized that a prayer to himself doesn't make sense anymore. The Bible says in Job chapter 42, verse 10, 11, that uh, Job turned his prayer and he directed his prayers to his friends. And the Bible said, and God turned the captivity, the captivity of Job. Why? Because he prayed for his friends. Sometimes we need to pray for other people and God shut up our own issues. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm going to ask you to uh, stand up now. My prayer item is a simple one. I just wanted to give you a general view of what is going on here. My prayer item is to pray for the leaders. If you check the program, I'm going to pray for the leaders just to lead us and all of us. We are going to pray. Why do we pray for leaders? Why do we have to pray for leaders? Leaders are the people whom God chose to stand in the gap. If leaders, if leaders are not at peace, there is no way we're going to be at peace. We all know that uh, the devil hates our leaders. I'm talking about the spiritual leaders mostly. The devil hates them and they are the most persecuted. Why? Because the devil knows that through them he has lost a lot of prisoners. Through the leaders, through the pastors, through the apostles, through men and women of God. The devil has lost a lot of ca ca captives. And that's why he must help them. And that's why they need prayer cover from time to time. But sometimes because the church is ignorant about that, we end up by just criticizing them all the time instead of covering them with prayer. They need a lot of prayer because some, some, I mean, some, some of the things they tackle really do not <laughs> President of the Lord. Leaders tackle issues that not even concerns them. And the devil go away in such anger, but this time not angry at, uh, at, uh, at, uh, at the original captive, but angry at a leader or a pastor who has released his prisoner. Do you get the point here? Now imagine, if you are here and you are a pastor, how many demons have you ever cast out of people? Huh? How many demons? Demons from every clan, from every tribe, from every village, all sorts of demons. And where are all those demons by you? How do they feel about you? Every time they see a crowd like this, they see how much you have caused them to lose and how many people they have lost. What do you think those people think about that pastor? <laughs> now, those of you Christmas pastors, before you pray, instead of praying for them, just tell me, what do you think those people think about those pastors who keep casting them going away? What do you think? Amen? Amen. Just think about that. They are very strategizing. They are, they are planning to cause havoc. By the end of the day, they attack their families. And sometimes when we hear the devil has attacked the family, I mean the, the, the families of the leaders, instead of covering them with prayer, we end up by just criticizing them. Not knowing that all the trouble they are facing is because of us. Amen? Amen. I used to be a very, very complaining man. Every time I could see leaders of governments having ex excessive security around them, driven in so many cars, I'm not saying it's so good, but I used to complain so a lot. Until I realized that maybe somehow, somewhere, they need some security because they are the most targeted. All the animals of the country target to them, all the animals of the nation target to their children. 
If you call it, in Uganda we have call If, uh, I'm sorry if it's your uncle, okay? <laughs> Just remember that I'm in the diaspora. <laughs> Just bring it up, okay? Take it easy. <laughs> I don't have to get into okay? But in any country, okay? If there is any, an anti government or a fighter, if we fail to capture the leader of that nation, the next person you can think about is the wife. If you are a wife, the child. If you get a child of a president, you are almost him. Capture the president. Because you can put it in the demand. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. The devil knows how pastors are fixed. The devil knows that there is nothing you can do with the pastor and make him go down. <laughs> nothing. The devil knows that if a pastor gets to report that his car has overturned, that's it. That pastor, the following morning, he will grab the microphone and say, that uh, everything is still okay. Right. You are still on the front. I'll get another car. The devil knows that. He knows how much we're black. He knows how much we are proud in our faith. But there is one area where you will never grab the microphone and say, everything is still fine. When he captures the wife, when he captures the husband, when he captures the son, when they tell you your son is on drugs, when they tell you your son is home. There is no way you can stand on the public and say, everything is still fine, God will give you another child. You cannot. For the cast, you can. For the baby, you can black. You can say, God will give you another baby. But what about when he captures the sun? So the devil knows all that. He knows the softening targets. He knows how to silence men of God. He knows how to bring shame to them. That's why instead of criticizing them, we need to cover them with prayer. Yeah. Why? Why? Because they are persecuted because of us. All the demons from your family, eh? whom the pastors cast out, they are, they are so angry. Now the next person they, they are thinking about is the pastor. The one who chased them away. Can I cast out your heart from over there? Can you get that your guru? And instead of you knowing that, that these pastors need prayer, need to cover them with prayer. We just, you know, talk about them all over the place. So today we are here, one of the items we are handling, we want to pray and cover the leaders, the pastor, the men of God, with prayer in the name of Jesus. Together with their families. Together with their children. Their children doesn't deserve to be criticized because you have a one, one little thing. Some churches really get pastor's families. Some churches get pastor's children. One little thing they hear, they talk about it the whole city. Instead of knowing that that son is actually different from your son. Why? He's a soft target of the devil. Can we raise up our hands and start to pray for the leaders? Father, we are here in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for the opportunity of being here to study in the girl for our nation in Uganda in particular. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help us support in Uganda. We are here not of a concern. For sure we are concerned. For here we are sick. We are here to say that have mercy. Have mercy support in Uganda. Have mercy support our presidents, our leaders, our secular leaders, political leaders. Have mercy. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, remember in Uganda, save in Uganda. Oh God, fight for you, Uganda. In the name of Jesus and Lord in particular, we are here to lift the men and the women of God who you have chosen to serve you, to stand on the party. The men and women of God in the priesthood. Oh God, help us support them. Father, we are to them. We bring them Lord on the altar. Save the Lord. Father, come on them. Lord, in the name of Jesus, save the Lord. Fight for them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Sustain them, Father, let them to stand more. Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy upon us. We know the challenges that they are going through here and there. But Lord, fight their battles in the name of Jesus Christ. Continue to anoint them, oh God, so that they can stand more. 
and be able to stand here for all. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to learn more. 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 We know that they go through the Lord. We know that they do the Lord. We know that they stand in the God for other people. They stand in the God for other people. For the neighbors of other people. For the peace of other people. In the name of Jesus. And by the end of the day, they happen to be the soft target of the enemy. Because Hey! 